I'm going to teach you how I film listing videos on this property. And I'm also going to give you a pro tip at the end of this video to get better cinematic footage for your real estate videos. Let's get it. First step is unpacking the camera gear today. I'm using my Sony a7R4 with three different lenses and my Ronin SC. My lenses are 85 1.8 and then I have a G Master 24 to 70 2.8 and a Sigma 14 to 24 2.8. So these are the lenses that I use for my real estate videos. To get better at listing videos, you need to understand the focal length of your lens. So right now, I'm going to show you what they look like. This is an 85 millimeter lens. So these are ideal for detailed shots. I am putting the sink faucet as my main focus of this particular clip, and that is where I want to draw my viewers' eyes to. Okay, so same shot. Now you can see this is a lot more in the picture now because I'm shooting on a 50mm lens. So 50Ms are good for talking head intros and exits. When you're shooting inside for real estate, you need to have a minimum of a 24mm lens. You can see from a 24 versus the 50 or 85, it is a huge dramatic difference. That 24mm lens gives you so much footage into your clip. This is by far my favorite lens, my 14 to 24 Sigma 2.8. I use this on every real estate shot that I go on. This is my go-to lens. I love this ultra wide lens to get as much of the house into my clip as possible. This is a must have lens if you're going to do your own listing videos. If you're like me, you film 99% of the time by yourself. So having a nice tripod is a must have if you're going to start doing your own listing videos. Now do all of your tripod work first. So anything that requires your tripod, film all that first, your intro, your exit, any type of other shots. Get that done first because you don't want to waste time jumping back and forth from putting your camera on your gimbal to the tripod and wasting time and energy. Plus, it's just extremely frustrating. As you can see here, it took me over five minutes to get my gimbal balanced. Now that we're balanced, I'm getting all of the exterior footage of the house. Now, when you're dealing with natural sunlight, that can change very quickly. So you cannot waste any type of time trying to get as much footage as possible. So I like to have a entryway walk into the house towards the front door. I also like to get shots from left to right. Now you want to get as many shots as possible of the exterior of the home. You can never have too much footage. So take your time, get as much footage as you need because it's always better to have too much footage than not enough footage. One of the hardest things about doing your own listing videos is knowing what to film. And I get asked this question all the time, Mike, what do you film? So to answer that question, the easiest way possible is you film every angle of every room in every direction possible. So yes, you're going to go back and forth so many times in one room and you're going to think you have enough footage. And when you go in and start editing this, you're not going to have enough footage. So always get as much footage as possible when you're inside filming. Go down every wall. Go forward, go backwards. Don't be scared to do it five, six, seven times because you only need that one shot. You're only going to use about 10 to 15% of all of your footage for your listing videos. So you need to make sure they count. So walk back and forth by the kitchen island, by the countertops, through the bathrooms. Do it every way possible just to make sure you have enough footage. Also look at detailed shots. Get detailed fixtures, uh, lightings, faucets, turn the water on to get some movement going. Walk around the couch, make sure you have the fans on. Little things like this make a dramatic difference when it comes to your overall listing video. Okay, so now let's talk aperture so aperture is what they call your depth of field so right now i am at a 1.8 aperture so the reason i'm at a low aperture is one i want the subject myself to be the only thing in focus and everything around me is blurred out because i want to draw the viewer's attention to me right that's in focus so when you want to use a very low aperture you want to use that for detailed shots so you want to use that for maybe a nice chandelier or a nice sink or something to do in the kitchen or primary bath. You wanna really focus in on that really small detail. Now let's go to a higher aperture. Okay, so now we are at a higher aperture. You can already see the difference that you can see that I'm in focus, but also the background behind me is also slightly in focus. So your depth of field is now being more visible when you have a higher aperture. So right now I'm shooting F8. So that's what I like to really shoot my real estate content in is an F8. 
uh, because it gives me a great depth of field so people can see from the living room into the kitchen. Or if you have like an open floor plan, I want to be able to see through the entire length of the house and things are not blurred out. So that's the reason why you want to have a good aperture like F8, 7.1, or even 9 when you're filming inside real estate photography. Now, you have to be careful when you go with a higher aperture that you are adjusting for your ISO. It's not going to let as much light in, so you're going to have to compensate with the higher ISO or fake sunlight. Now, when you add too much ISO, you will now start getting a lot of noise, which you'll see right here. As you can see, that's a lot of noise because I have a higher ISO that I can't pixelate the pixels uh, by using the artificial sunlight. So you need to dial in your ISO, make sure your ISO is comparable, look at your histogram, make sure that you're somewhere in the middle when it comes to your diagram so you know where you're at on your artificial sunlight. Now, let's go even to a higher aperture to like F22. All right, so right now I'm at F22. You can see in the background that the background has came pretty much into focus from the very first shot where it was completely blurred out. So honestly, I hardly ever use the highest aperture when it comes to real estate photography and videography. Um, this is something that you would probably want to use outside. All right, so like I promised, my pro tip is this. When you're coming in and you're going to be filming a listing video, either your first one or your hundredth one, you need to make sure you have a flow when it comes to your footage because you need to imagine that your camera is a perspective buyer's eyes. So you don't want to jump around from outside, back to inside, back to outside, to the bathroom. You want to have a good flow when it comes to your footage. So that's what I like to do. I like to come in obviously through the front door. I'm going to showcase the living room. I'm going to showcase the kitchen. And then I'm going to work my way into the primary bedroom, primary bath, and then the spare bedrooms. I'm going to come outside, do all of my outside footage at one time. I'm going to make sure I get some really good detail shots of the house. And then also some pull away shots that somebody's potentially leaving the house. So I hope that helps, but take some of this information that I gave you and apply it and use it and just keep posting. All right, guys, peace.